Good afternoon, I'm Sarah Rupp reporting from the SMC News Desk. There was a two-car crash on Interstate I-135 just north of the Assyria exit late on Thursday night. A 29-year-old male was driving a 2008 Chevy Suburban when he fell asleep behind the wheel and ran into a 2012 Chevy Sonic, then ran into a ditch. The driver and all six children were buckled up, but the front seat passenger, a 27-year-old female, was not wearing a seatbelt. She suffered a hand injury and was transported to Salina Regional Hospital. The driver of the Sonic is a 22-year-old male from Missouri and was able to control the vehicle pulling over at the next exit without injuries. A federal agent, a federal grant has been marked for Salina Regional Airport, which will help rehabilitate 7,500 feet of the runway. $3,964,510 have been allocated for this big project. Presbyterian Manor of Salina is offering a healthy living for your brain and body tips from latest research free virtual event. It'll be at 2 p.m. on June 2nd, and this is an opportunity for you to learn about diet and nutrition, exercise, cognitive activity, and social engagement, and use hand-on tools to help you incorporate these recommendations into a plan for healthy aging and hopefully helping to prevent Alzheimer's disease. All information can be found online or by calling Haley Young at 1-800-272-3900. OCCK is celebrating National Transportation Week from May 17th to May 21st. On Wednesday, May 19th, OCCK Transportation will be hosting an open house in the form of a cookout from 11 a.m. until 2 p.m. at 340 North Santa Fe in Salina, where they will be serving hot dogs, chips, and bottled water. This event is free and open to the public, and there will be an educational aspect provided as guests will be able to look at current transportation vehicles and meet staff. They'll also be able to learn about transportation in Salina and in the surrounding area. Kansas Governor Laura Kelly issued a statement on Thursday which confirmed that anyone who has been fully vaccinated within the last two weeks can now go about their business without a face mask. However, Kansans are encouraged to wear face masks where local cities and counties or businesses and healthcare facilities do require them. Kansas Representative Stephen Johnson from Assyria announced that he is running for the Office of State Treasurer in the 2022 election. A 13-year-old has been recently arrested on suspicion of fatally shooting a 14-year-old Christopher Garcia on April 28th. The Kansas Bureau of Investigation says that Grant County Sheriff's Office arrested the boy on suspicion of second-degree murder, criminal possession of a firearm, and possession of stolen property. The investigators say that Garcia was shot at a park in Ulysses and was taken to a Wichita hospital where he died just four days later. A Lawrence man has been convicted of voluntary manslaughter in the death of his girlfriend. The Lawrence Journal World reports that 43-year-old Jonathan L. West pleaded guilty to a lesser charge in exchange for prosecutors dropping a charge of second-degree murder. 41-year-old Jennifer Mosby of Lawrence was found dead in her home in January. Police say that she had been shot twice, and West told investigators that the two had smoked marijuana laced with PCP, which is known to cause hallucinations. He says that he back blacked out, and when he regained consciousness, he fled to Topeka, where he was later arrested. A local coroner says that three teenagers who died last weekend when their car crashed into the Cottonwood River south of Emporia drowned. Television station KSN says that the Lyon County Sheriff's Office released the coroner's report on Wednesday. The wreck was discovered around 6.30 p.m. on Saturday after an injured 15-year-old girl was spotted walking down the road. The girl told deputies that she had been a passenger in the car that had crashed. Authorities pulled a 2005 Pontiac Grand Prix from the river with three people inside. The sheriff's office said that the 17-year-old, a 13-year-old, and a 17-year-old were all inside. The injured girl was taken to a local hospital and is recovering. 
A government report of forecasts a bountiful winter crop this year in Kansas. The National Agricultural Statistics Service estimated on Wednesday that the state's wheat crop will come at a 30, 331 million bushels, up 18% from last year's crop. It anticipates average yields in the state of 48 bushels per acre and an increase of 3 bushels from last year. The agency also estimated 3.9 million acres will be harvested in Kansas and that is 650,000 more acres of wheat than a year ago. Now for a look at our three-day weather forecast. Tonight will be showers and thunderstorms likely mainly after 1 a.m. Mostly cloudy with a low around 57 degrees and south winds up to 13 miles per hour with a chance of precipitation being at 60%. On Saturday, showers and thunderstorms are likely mostly cloudy with a high near 72 degrees with an east wind in the afternoon. The chance of precipitation is at 70%. Saturday night, showers and thunderstorms are likely mostly cloudy with a low around 58 degrees, an east wind of 6 to 9 miles per hour. The chance of precipitation is at 70%. On Sunday, showers and thunderstorms are likely mainly after 1 p.m., mostly cloudy with a high near 74. East to southeast wind of 7 to 10 miles per hour and the chance of precipitation is at 70%. Sunday night, showers and thunderstorms are likely mainly before 1 a.m., mostly cloudy with a low around 58 degrees. The chance of precipitation is at 60%. Monday, a 40% chance of showers and thunderstorms, mostly cloudy with a high near 73 degrees. And on Monday night, a 40% chance of showers and thunderstorms, mostly cloudy with a low around 57 degrees. I'm Sarah Rupp reporting from the SMC News Desk and I'm wishing you a good evening.